The Cannabis Conversation. A European perspective on the emerging legal cannabis industry. Welcome to the Cannabis Conversation with Anuj Desai, where we explore the new legal cannabis industry by speaking to the professionals that are helping to shape it. Hope you're all well and had a good week. I got out and about last week. I was at Cannabis Invest UK at the Biltmore in London. Very fancy hotel. Great event organised by Patrick Morton. Patrick was a very early guest on the show, I think in the first 10 episodes. Really nice to see the great and good of the UK cannabis sector. Many people I haven't seen for a couple of years since the pandemic. Many people also I'd only met online, so nice to see them in person. And whilst it was nice to see everyone, it didn't sound like much of the narrative had changed, unfortunately. Sadly, things are are still moving too slow here. And this was a kind of recurring theme that people were talking about. The presentations were painting a more optimistic view but uh, I think privately everyone wants things to get a move on so things loosening up any time soon is is more hope than expectation at the moment sadly. On that theme it was revealed last week that Boris Johnson actually approved rescheduling Cybin back in May but the Home Office have done nothing about it yet. This is another example of regressive drug policy from this government um, led by a truly awful Home Secretary. The main impact is is continuing to impede legitimate research in the UK, which is a sad but predictable approach from from the government. Um, And the most damaging effect is on those who are most in need of of this medicine. And finally, some even more sadder news. Michelle Kendall, who appeared on episode 90, passed away last week. Michelle talked very frankly about her battle with terminal ovarian cancer. And through her battle, she discovered medical cannabis and how it helped to give her some relief and became a real advocate for medical cannabis. She also made a film called Schedule One about her discoveries and her mission. And she provided huge amounts of inspiration to advocates and patients alike. So very, very sad news, but also I'm happy for her that she's now out of the suffering she was going through. So uh, my condolences and best wishes to her family. On with this week's show, we're really pleased to have the four or five guys back on to talk about cannabis and professional sport. Enjoy. On today's show, I have Dominic Day and George Cruz. Dom and George are co-founders of 45 CBD, and they are both international rugby players as well, who've got a great story. I'm really happy to welcome you guys back. How are you doing? Very good. Thanks, mate. It's good to be back on. It's been a while. I think it was a couple of years ago since John first time. Has indeed. Well, you're one of my first guests. So, yeah, great to have you back on. How are you doing, George? Very good, thank you. Good to be back. Nice to see you again. Yeah, and you've been in Japan for a bit. How's it been back in the UK? Ah, lovely. Brought the weather back. It's stinking hot here. But no, good. Had a really good time in Japan. Obviously, it's it's a crazy place. Something completely different. And I enjoyed being back, seeing a bit of my family and, uh, yeah, catching up with people. Yeah, it must have been a great experience. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. It's really great to get you on because the topic of cannabis and sport has been talked about a lot recently. So really good to get your opinion on that. But as is usual, and and for anyone that didn't catch the first sort of episode that we did together, would you mind sort of introducing yourself and sort of telling us a bit about what you were doing before with the rugby and all that stuff, but how and why you kind of got into CBD? Yeah, sure. So I was a professional rugby player for 15 years. I retired about a year and a half ago now. So George and I, we, towards well, the end of my career, George is still playing, but experienced sort of a number of injuries at similar times. So we were kind of looking for, looking for like an extra 1% to kind of help us with on the recovery side and looking at, looking at things that we could add to like our normal, our normal recovery protocols. And we, we stumbled across re- really uh, CBD, which had just been legalized at the time. When I say legalized it, in sport, it had been taken off the banned substance list. So it's something that, you know, we tried, we saw really great benefits. And then off the back of that, we saw that there was there was many athletes, not just rugby players, like a whole host of athletes that were using CBD and weren't like hugely comfortable with the products they were using. I think the market at the minute is is a bit cleaner, but at the time there was, there was a lot of brands out there and products that probably were were not what was in the bottle essentially was not was what was said in the bottle so we went out there and we kind of developed a range 
really based around sort of you know quality products you know we source we source the best roars we test the highest standards and then you know we we put our brand together four or five we launched in early 2019 i think george was it 2018 i always forget that one but um, yeah and then we you know it's, it's just it's just been super exciting great space to be in and you know we feel like we've gone from strength to strength and it's brought us to the present day yeah i mean it's pretty much said it to me i mean we were kind of sitting in the in the change rooms next to each other you know both feet up from having injuries and just discussing kind of what and how we you know recover and if there's anything that you know we can we can look at that's probably a little bit alternative and like looked across the pond really you know a lot of stuff happening in canada america at that point obviously a lot of times in sport as well that they you know a couple of years ahead of us in terms of recovery and products and sort of training training methods and so on so for us it was uh, quite it was an interesting thing to look into and, and again yeah like dom said we've got some good benefit out of it and just create a, 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 pro, a product based on you know provenance and, and testing and that's that's something that we're we're very proud of yeah fantastic and i mean things have moved on quite a bit since the last time we talked but you know do you remember encountering any kind of stigma about sort of looking into this at the time yeah, I thought we would. Like we would, we prepared really well in terms of right. So we did some initially, we did some BBC articles and so on, and, and you know we're prepared for some stick and some kickback. But like it was all very positive, really. You know, like we'd worked really closely with the the unions, with the drugs testers within our sports, and and like our governing bodies, our professional clubs that were at the time. So we we worked really closely with them and kept them all informed. And it's just a case, yeah, I think. If anything, people were more interested, and in, and that has clearly grown along with, you know, a lot of like the the regulations, I guess, the dropping of a lot of legislation within medical cannabis and CBD across the world. There's a growing trend towards, you know, different alternative products, and I think that's definitely replicated in in the lack of stigma, I guess, we got, and more the, you know, what's this about? How can we like? How can we get involved? That sort of like educational piece was was really sought after, and still to a large extent is. Yeah, that's brilliant. I guess it's a sign of the times, and it's really encouraging to yeah. to kind of hear that. So why don't we talk a bit about four or five, and you know, maybe Dom, do you want to tell us a bit to get the overview of what you guys are doing and how things are progressing since the last time we talked? Yeah, so I think I can't remember exactly when we spoke, but over the last couple of years, we've We've built up a great, great customer base, and, and not just within professional sport. Probably ninety percent of it is is outside of that, and just people who who want to live a quality, active life, really looking to stay healthy in a natural way. And we've launched in Boots Pharmacies. We've got some great listings that come in, which is hugely exciting for us as a business, and something that, although slowed down massively by COVID, is something that we have have progressed hugely. So that's a hugely exciting part of the business. We've also branched into vitamins. It's something that that we, based on similar experience on the CBD side, after delving into like the, the quality of the products on the market, we kind of looked at what we were taking as as professional athletes throughout our careers, and like really breaking down those products and what was actually in them. And I think it's it's probably quite it's quite worrying for a lot of people when you actually delve into into what's in a lot of sort of products that are hugely available on the shelves in, in your Tesco or your, your Holland and Barrett. And we kind of wanted to flip that on its head and create like really quality, natural products that actually work. So we launched that recently, a bit of a soft launch, and we're pushing that hard. But we've also brought on a number of, of athletes, calling it our team player program. So it's basically based around people who, you know, athletes, professional athletes who really want to, who use our brand and you know they want quality products but also outside of that we're quite passionate about about helping athletes not just during their careers but sort of transitioning post careers so we're lucky enough george and i that previous to this process but especially during four or five to have built up like such a huge quality network and we've had so many amazing people that have helped us both in the cannabis industry and, and sort of outside the cannabis industry we've got investors in our business who they sit on the board of gsk of astrazeneca of some like really huge public companies and we've also had a lot of athletes invest in our company as well and it's sort of because they trust us to create like you know, quality products, but also we're trying to help them sort of with anything they need outside of sport, you know, whether it's, you know, everything that we've fallen down on really. And through our best efforts in business, we've certainly made a lot of mistakes. And that's something that we 
we feel like we can help people do in their transition through the sport and lives and, and post their sport and lives as well. So that's something that we're hugely excited about. We're going to be launching that as well properly in the, in the next couple of months. Yeah, that's brilliant. And look, you know, I think mistakes are all part of the game, right? It's learning and kind of sets you up for better things ahead. And I'm glad you kind of talked about sort of the product range because I think when we spoke, it was it was pretty basic. I think it was the usual tinctures and a balm, which I think is what everyone kind of started out with. But it's really interested that you sort of evolved it a bit to sort of broaden it out. What have you, George, maybe you can take this one. What have you kind of learned about selling consumer packaged goods? It's, you know, it's quite a marketing game, I guess. But you know, how have those sort of learnings manifested? We're still learning, uh, I'll put it that way. But yeah, like we, I guess not traditionally, probably focused on a lot of other things first, like getting a business set up, all those sort of like more foundation bits before really getting like a proper marketing team in place, a proper like e-coms team in place. You know, we start with a pretty basic website. We went a lot down like the SEO route rather than maybe the, the marketing route. And I think we're just coming to grips with the fact that that's probably the route which we most need and, and the route that I guess our strengths are within, within like, you know, contacts to athletes, to, to sports markets, to unions, to, to clubs and so on. So for us, that's like we probably had a bit of a realisation moment, you know, a year or so ago. And we've been kind of tailoring it a little bit more towards, you know, bringing a team in-house. Like there's all the, the sort of things in terms of hiring, you know, where you outsource, who you outsource to, like the issues with agencies, which I'm sure many people have, but I'm sure that, you know, that many people have great agencies as well. So it's kind of like finding that balance of like of where you put your capital and like where you put your focuses. So we have been quite broad. It's tough enough trying to go for like a retail and a D2C on your own e-com. So we're kind of like trying to narrow a bit little, like a path and a route down in terms of like, we're going to go after this for a certain amount of period and then focus hard on this. So just getting a bit of structure about us has been like, has been a really interesting learning curve and something that, like I said, we're, we're still kind of on that curve, but I think we've got a decent plan in place. But yeah, like it's marketing clearly is like the, the huge part of it all. And I think, especially with the nutrition, we, you know, it's an extremely hard market to break into. You have to have some very decent usps you have to have like you know you have to be a cut above the rest in certain certain areas and that's we really believe our, our product our formulation and i guess the fact that like you know we've got eight plus international athletes invested into us you know we've got a, a huge board of different investors from very interesting backgrounds kind of backs up the route that you know we are on the right path and it's just trying to get that across in marketing and education and why i guess our product is a decent product yeah, absolutely. I think the, the brand ambassador thing is great. And you guys obviously know a lot of the right people to help you do that. So that's fantastic. Tom, how's COVID treated the business? Have you noticed a kind of an uptick from more people buying stuff online and more people maybe being more interested in their health? Oh, yeah, definitely. First of all, I think as a business, although we had a big focus last year on going into retail, which was obviously sort of scuppered by covid for you know obviously there's there's no one out there going into stores so stores went on board new brands so we kind of pivoted a big focus online and we saw we did see a big uptick there but i think what we've definitely noticed and this is why we're so excited about the vitamins is people are taking their health so much more seriously now and they are looking at what they are taking and that ties in exactly to what we created like not all vitamins are equal, right? So there's certain types of vitamin C, certain types of vitamin D, certain types of biotics that you can see on a shelf and be absolutely sort of mesmerized by the the amount that are there and not realize which one does which, which one's better. And a lot of people will just go straight for the cheapest one, you know, historically. But I think now after COVID, people are very focused on on their health and making sure that they're putting the right stuff in their body. And, you know, hopefully with the messaging that, that we're going to be trying to put across in the next, well, moving forward, you know, we can sort of show them the quality of our products and, and why they're better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's a familiar story with the number of people that are in the same space. So, you know, great to hear that. So right, let's move on to the kind of main topic of cannabis and sport in general. And, and maybe, I'm not sure, George or Dob, who wants to take this one, but maybe you can kind of recap on the, the general position of CBD in sport. You mentioned WADA, which is the World Anti-Doping Association, I think. One of you mind giving us a sort of overview? Yes. So currently CBD within sport is legal. So WADA, in beginning of January 2018, took CBD 
as its own cannabinoid off the banned substances list. So that is all legal. I guess the issues come and I think where nutritionists push back on and, and you know, governing bodies push back on is it, it, it's quite, I guess it's hard to find a product that's, that's very, that CBD isolate uh, that is very pure. And that's where you get a lot of people claiming certain stuff, but then obviously not, you know, putting the right stuff in the bottles. So that whole education piece. And I think WADA can do a really, could do a really good job of clarifying that up a bit more, you know, and, and we've called for unions to, and WADA to, to clarify that statement a bit more, but also to help put in research into CBD, research into medical cannabis, because I think going forward, it's such a, a huge topic. And there have been, you know, some decent studies already around usage within sport, and also like the misunderstanding and so on. So it would be a, a nice, I guess, route that, you know, if unions could put money into research, could put money into finding a bit, you know, a few more solutions, then that would be ideal. But in terms of, yeah, in terms of CBD within sport, legal, just needs to be a, a well-tested product and you know if you're a consumer you need a and an athlete maybe a drugs tested athlete you need to do your research around you know which product because there's a lot of companies coming on and a lot of companies trying to make a quick buck and then leave so yeah very wise words and i guess so the kiss the cbd bit's the easier part of the question mm. that the more difficult and the reason that we kind of wanted to get you on and is the shikari richardson story shikari richardson's u.s sprinter and probably one of the top two or three sprinters in the world this year, who unfortunately is unable to go to the Olympics because she tested positive cannabis that she was using to get over her mother's death, I think it was. And it's huge, caused a huge amount of controversy. You know, I know this isn't your area necessarily, but what are you seeing around medical cannabis in relation to this? Because in the States, is obviously a much bigger kind of topic that's at the forefront. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Look, in the States, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because cannabis is perceived differently in the States than it is in the UK at the minute. You know, we're seeing sort of mass adoption in terms of the industry and the legalization, you know, state by state, I think is, is just opening up hugely. And then on top of that, you're seeing, you know, individual sports kind of allow cannabis within that. So, you know, the NFL, you know, baseball, I think basketball recently has, has taken it off the drug testing list. So, you know, when you look at it like that, you know, there's going to be a bit of uproar. And I think she knows she did wrong, right? Because she came out and admitted it. And I think there was, and I think she did exactly the right way in how she handled it. I think she handled it excellently. And it's just a difficult one. You know, she was never, they were never going to sort of allow her back in, which is, you know, hugely sad because obviously she was struggling at the time. But I think moving forward, hopefully this is something that can kind of, you know, spark a change. You know, I think if we were to look back, you know, four years from now, the next Olympics, hopefully she's competing and, you know, cannabis is has been looked at on a wider scale from WADA, from from all the drug testing bodies. Well, I think George about me here, we, we hope that, you know, the studies are done and, and med, medicinal cannabis is allowed in sport. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a real shame, but I agree with you. I think she handled it really well. And yeah, hopefully it, it sets a good precedent for things to come. I want to pick up on one of the things that George said, and I know you guys have sort of, you've been a bit public in sort of trying to call for unions to do this. And <laughs> this is a difficult question, but a lot of the unions and the people that run the unions t- tend to be a bit older. And is it just a question of just that this is quite a new thing for them and it means a lot of unlearning to kind of get on board with it? Is it that kind of thing that's slowing things down a little bit? Yeah, I'd say probably like there's always a time period between crossovers of, you know, of opinions and of, I guess, legis- legislations and things like that. And I think I think the general opinion is that this could and should be something that is kind of dropped. And I think you look at like the way WADA tests for cannabis over the last like few years, they've, you know, it's now 150 nanograms per milliliter of blood, which is, you know, you've pretty much got to be having a, you know, a full on spliff to be to be hitting that. From all the all the stuff I've been told, and I think that's like an indication of, you know, they don't want people just getting pulled for sitting around people who are passive smoking and so on. Like, but even that, this, you know, like I said, it's a large amount, so they they really don't want people to be getting pulled for a drugs test for cannabis. It's just they have to abide by you know rules, regulations within all countries because WADA is a governing body that covers you know the world or so on, or covers the Olympics, which covers you know all countries. So. It's going to be a long process because there's going to be countries that, you know, won't want to do this for kind of taps into the whole the government versus the, you know, the sporting body. And I think it's until like that last one drops, then 
you know, I think it's going to take a long time for then it to be replicated throughout sport. But you, you can see the change, and you and like you say, there are things they can do in terms of okay, well, off season you can you can maybe do this. It's much more relaxed and so on. You've seen that as a you know as a, as a general play across sports with cannabis. So it's interesting to see that, like those sort of things are hints of where it's going. And I really do think it's it will be open right up because there's also a necessity to look away from things like painkillers, things like opioids, and you know they've had such a bad rep for so long. And rightfully slower, so in most accounts that, you know, if there are other alternative options, which, you know, are, are a bit more green, a bit more natural, then, you know, they should be fast tracked. And, and that is what I think is happening. It's just fast tracked in a sense is, you know, it's going to take a long time because these things are, you know, deep rooted. And like you say that I wouldn't say it's more the stigma. I think it's just the change in policy takes forever. Like I think people are past the stigma now. They they understand that it's a, a decent product. It's It can be used effectively but it's just the legislation the time the the effort the again getting that through you know a load of different governing bodies you just, you just can't change stuff like this quickly I think that's the the biggest thing yeah i absolutely agree i think the time it takes for regulations to be written is, yeah. is quite long so hopefully as you say we're past that stigma stage and now it's a question of people gathering the evidence that they need to kind yeah. of push this through so yeah i mean maybe we just just a bit of context so to my mind, the things that really apply to sport when it comes to cannabis and CBD would be the ability to sort of treat pain and recovery and anxiety and stress, those sort of three, two, three big areas. In a non-cannabis world, what do athletes generally use to kind of cope with those issues? Yeah, like the current methods would be for something like pain, obviously it would be like ice, physio rehab there'd definitely be the the painkillers the anti inflams would be a large part of that and obviously time as well so time off time recovery to to get those things gone but there's there's loads of other things you know you can do compression chambers you can do like ice baths all those sort of weird and wonderful things and they really are like the the one percenters which you you know you start adding up they start making a difference right fantastic thank you and i mean the reason i asked that is Obviously, you guys see CBD and potentially medical cannabis is complementing those current therapies quite well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've always said from the start that CBD for us, is, it's not something that we just want to put in place of everything else. It's something that worked well for us because we added it on. Like one, like Jules mentioned, those those one percenters, every athlete is looking for a one percenter because, you know, in elite sport, you keep adding those one percenters up and it makes a huge difference. So just in addition to those things that Jules mentioned, that's how we perceive CBD being used. And exactly like we did, as it to a normal regime of, you know, taking taking vitamins, using CBD every day, doing the physio, doing the ice baths, doing the recovery. And, you know, we saw great results from it. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And sort of move on, and I think this sort of also goes back to the Chef Kerry Richardson story. The idea of performance enhancing is it's quite subjective and, you know, it's quite a difficult concept to capture, actually, because, you know, effectively water can be performance enhancing in that it rehydrates you and it kind of deals with certain aspects that you need in sport and recovery what's your general view around that and kind of where the line is <laughs> if that's not too wide a question yeah i think it's a ridiculous statement to say cannabis is performance enhancing i think it's it's something that can be taken and is taken as a you know as, as an off-field sort of product it's very much to do with recovery to do with pain and so on and I think that's it should be taken and looked at like a more of a natural alternative to you know like opioids or to painkillers with it then that's that's something I definitely think you know should be a lot more research is been researched heavily and like I said there's calls for you know unions and, and governing bodies to really jump on that and have a good look at it in depth yeah absolutely and what do you see I mean you guys play rugby very macho sport what are you seeing about the general attitude to plant medicine in sport? You know, I think you've kind of answered this already. You said people that are m much more receptive, but is it genuinely kind of across the board or are there some people who still think it's a bit of hippie nonsense? Well, I think, you know, athletes, athletes in particular are open to anything that's going to help. And, um, you know, I think uh, we've touched on the research and the evidence. And like George said, that, that is ongoing now and, and continues to sort of come to light, like sort of week by week, really. But if athletes can see the evidence, then you know, they'll massively jump on it. And, you know, I think when we got into the industry, 
So we, we reached out, to, and this is just within rugby, right? So this is a small circle. When you open up to every sport in the UK, you can kind of multiply it out. But within rugby, there were like, you know, five to 10 rugby players at every club using CBD products. And this is like two or three years ago, right? So when you look at how far the industry has come since then and how popular it is, you know, I think you could at least double that now in terms of like the amount of people in each team sort of using like a natural product and, you know, I think George mentioned it there, but you add on the fact that it's quite a hot topic at the minute in terms of like opioids and sort of the long term effect of them. Like, you know, athletes don't don't want to be having those issues later on later on in career or later on in life. So, you know, you added a natural product that is the safety profile is is very good. And I think I think it's a no brainer for athletes and not just athletes, but you know, and anyone who wants to sort of live an active lifestyle and, and just, you know, be out there using something that is is pure absolutely absolutely and actually this brings up another question just allied to this i mean i cover cannabis from a lot of different angles and the frequent kind of pain point i would say is around doctor education whilst you're seeing kind of fellow athletes being more engaged with this how are you seeing kind of some of the team doctors and physios because you guys obviously have like decent medical teams what's their kind of take on a lot of this stuff Obviously, it's clear to distinguish between CBD and, and medical cannabis and or cannabis in, in these aspects because in the UK, we're, you know, it's, it's just not an option for us at the moment, medical cannabis. But I think in terms of CBD, yeah, like there, there is interest. And spent, there was a good study done by uh, John Moore and, and Dr. Close, I think, around like uses of CBD within professional sports teams. I think it, it sat around like 20%. Of people had tried it, about eight percent had then continued. So if you look at that, that's a pretty that's a pretty strong number of people then to continue. You know, nearly half of the people who have tried it, you know, continue it. So, or and have had benefits. So those sort of studies, like initial studies, are, are very interesting. It shows that the nutritionists, the the doctors, are, you know, that there is an interest in that, and there should be. Yeah, in terms of like the the cannabis sector within the UK, it's it is very patient led. So it's patient up. So you know, you, you, there's a large amount of call for, you know, for consumers or, or patients, then asking their GPs, asking their, their doctors, like, you know, how do we do this? Can we get on board with this? And then there isn't quite that sort of GP down sort of mechanism in place yet. And I know there's a lot of like companies, a lot of charities on part of Sapphire Medical Clinics, which, you know, work to help, you know, vet and I guess, provide information to patients that you know think they can benefit and have benefited from cannabis in the previously so definitely two different topics you know as cannabis still isn't allowed in, in sport in UK and in the UK so uh, yeah you could separate them quite a lot there but all in all it is quite user-led I'd say and user up rather than kind of like clinically down so that's that's the sort of trend we're seeing at the moment and, and that that for me is exciting because there's a lot of anecdotal within that which then needs backing up by research. But if, so that's like, yeah, it's an exciting time for both industries. Yeah. And that definitely mirrors basically a lot of the industry. I think if we can unlock that sort of top down approach from the medical professionals, I think it will really open things up, but kind of understandably, they would like to see more evidence. And that's again, it, it takes time because these things are, you know, like you say, written in stone and like these things are pre-planned years and years in advance. So like it's hard to push the boat quite quickly, but it's definitely happening and the like opinions are, are hugely changed you know it's the amount of times it's brought up in, in government and the parliament at the moment is very interesting and like i said it hints towards where we're going whether it will be a slower on this side than it is in the us clearly that's that will be the case but you look at large companies that tend to drive change us germany you know th those countries are and have changed and it's for me it's inevitable it's just how how quickly it can happen and i guess if you know there's stuff like prime ministers that want to push things like tax on it and and so on then you know that might suddenly move it a lot quicker than if it's just public opinion so i assume in the next few years a lot of it will come down to the economics rather than the you know and that that'll be hidden by kind of public opinion but i assume a lot of it will come down to economics yeah follow the money follow the money and money talks yeah no i couldn't agree with you more but hopefully whatever way it happens it will happen so that that would be good i think for all of us Indeed, yeah. cool well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out. It's been really very interesting. And there's so much here. And hopefully over the coming months, there will be more 
sort of stuff to add as this evolves and and hopefully it won't be two years before we do this again <laughs> i'd love to have you on sooner than that cool okay well look guys thank you we'd love to see you again soon so thanks for joining me thanks i'll just take the opportunity if so if, if there's people out there companies out there or anything that you know we've got a very open approach love collaborating with people so get in touch we'll get back to you and yeah it's like a, a hugely interesting industry but also space at the moment absolutely thank you thanks guys thanks for listening hope you enjoyed the show if you did please subscribe rate review and share the podcast it will help me spread the good word on how this amazing industry is developing I work with various cannabis startups to help them get funded and grow. I also work with corporates and international cannabis companies to help them understand and navigate the European cannabis sector. We're working with some great clients across the cannabis value chain and we'd love to help you too. If you're interested, please visit www.canverse.global to get in touch.